What is going on, YouTube? Fascinating graveyard. And today we're in the Springside Cemetery here in Arkansas City, Kansas. And let me tell you, I am amazed that right now it is not very windy for this section of Kansas. That's quite remarkable. I could easily fly my drone right now and uh, I wouldn't have any problem whatsoever. Does anybody remember watching Unsolved Mysteries? Still to this very day, it is my favorite television show of all time. I love Unsolved Mysteries. The new Unsolved Mysteries, I am not a big fan of. It's not a terrible program, it just doesn't it doesn't hold my my uh, attention the way that Robert Stack and Dennis Farina did, especially Robert Stack. He'll always be the host of Unsolved Mysteries, but uh, Dennis Farina was pretty good in his own right as well. So me watching Unsolved Mysteries as a child and me doing what I do today, I always want to visit the locations and the uh, reenactments uh, areas or locations of stories that really stuck to me uh, you know hundreds of stories throughout the uh, years that I would watch on Unsolved Mysteries and one of the stories that really stuck to me of course was the uh, Bermuda Triangle episode and the uh, Flight 19 you know the mysterious circumstances of what happened to Flight 19 and uh, what happened to the 14 men who were flying in the five planes that were out on that day, December 5th, 1945. And uh, the mysterious uh, area that is the Bermuda Triangle. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what happened. Now, basically, I'm just pretty much regurgitating the uh, the episode of Unsolved Mysteries, which uh, I'm going to link in the description box below. Please watch it. It's fantastic. I'm going to try to summarize the story as quickly as I possibly can. So, December 5th, 1941, the reenactment on Unsolved Mysteries goes pretty much as follows. So, it starts off with a man by the name of Lieutenant Charles Taylor. So, this guy, uh, they kind of made him out to be kind of like a like a Tom Cruise top gun handsome guy uh, had lots of flight training time he was actually the flight instructor on uh, this uh, flight 19 uh, he was in a plane hanging back watching the other uh, uh, pilots uh, four of them were student pilots uh, flying on this uh, practice bombing mission that they were going on so in the, in the reenactment, uh, Lieutenant Taylor goes up to his commanding officer and says, hey man, I'm not uh, feeling too hot today. Uh, I, I don't feel good. I don't want to go on the, on the practice bombing mission. And, you know, I guess the guy could have said, all right, man, take a day off. But you know what? He was probably figuring, ah, this guy's probably party too much last night. He's, uh, you know, got, has a hangover. Well, well, tough luck. You know, we don't have anybody to replace you and you're going on that mission. So he goes anyways, even though he told the guy, he's like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not feeling too hot. I ain't feeling too good. So around, uh, I want to guess around noontime, one o'clock, something like that, uh, the five planes, uh, they all take off out of Fort Lauderdale. So it's him and then four of the pilots were student pilots but these weren't just regular student pilots they had way more than enough uh, flight time uh, to be considered uh, almost not student pilots but this is the military is very stringent with their uh, rules and what have you but they were pretty much almost done with being students so all together you have five planes you have 14 um, people in those five planes and they're doing a practice bombing run so in the uh, reenactment they're supposed to fly 120 nautical miles southeast, right? And then they, they bomb the ocean or whatever they do. And then they're going to turn and go 73 miles northwest 
and then they're going to head back to base, which would have been, you know, 120 miles southwest, and everything is fine. So around 3 p.m., uh, after they're done with the bombing mission, so they drop their bombs and everything's good. So they're heading back up to the uh, to the one point where they go to turn back to go back to Florida. And Lieutenant Taylor radios uh, ground control and he says, man, my compasses are acting funny. Both compasses are just spinning. They're acting crazy. I, I don't know where I'm at. He sees these little islands that he's flying below, right? He sees these little islands and he's like, you know what? He says, I think I'm in the Gulf of Mexico. I think these are the Florida Keys. But looking back on it, they believe that he was not where he thought he was, that he was actually miles and miles away uh, or flying over the Abaco Islands, which was 300 miles east of Florida. So this guy, instead of being 120 miles away from the coast, now he's 300 miles. He's way off. They've been flying away from land for the better part of probably an hour by now. So their compasses are going crazy. They're disoriented. They don't know where they're at. So one of the guys says, man, I think like... Um, I think we're here instead of there. So, you know, there's, there's probably bickering going on between these guys. And they're probably getting nervous because, you know, they got fuel. But you don't want to be flying around burning fuel in the middle of the ocean. And you don't know where you're at. You know? I definitely don't. So, in the reenactment, these guys, little did they know, when they tried to figure out where they were. And and uh, finally, they, like, they got themselves situated... They didn't know this, but they were literally less than 10 minutes from the coast of Florida, but they hadn't seen land. So imagine you're flying in the ocean for hundreds of miles and you don't see land, but you're 10 minutes away from Florida. But they actually believed that they were on the west side of Florida for some unknown reason. I, see, these guys are disoriented now. They think they're on the west side of Florida, so they start flying east towards the coast. Uh, little they know is they're flying east away from land. Eventually, they run out of fuel and all of the planes crash. Now, the story doesn't end there because, you know, they, they, they sent out search missions uh, looking for these guys. I want to say another plane. I could be wrong. I, I hope I'm not mixing up stories. I want to say another plane went down looking for them, or it could have been another story that I got mixed up with. I got, I got too many stories in my brain. So eventually their wreckage was never found, and you, you have the urban legend, what happened to Flight 19? What happened? So in 1986, when the space shuttle Challenger blew up after uh, taking off out of uh, uh, Cape Carnaval, of course, then we're looking for the wreckage of the spaceship. And during the search, they find some plane wreckage right around the area where they believe that the bombers went down in. And then you had this big hoopla ha over is this the plane wreckage, which it was, it couldn't have been identified. And the bodies were beyond being able to be identified. And the man said, Oh, I think we found Flight 19. We found Flight 19. Cut to the story short, they didn't find it. Um, they found several uh, pieces of wreckage throughout the years in that same area, but this is uh, known plane crashes that have that happened, uh, you know, before Flight 19. Um, many, many plane wreckages. So, at the end of the day, basically, what I'm telling you is no sign of any of the plane wreckage. Has ever been found. I don't think they found any like oil or gasoline. It's like some kind of indications that would tell you that a plane crashed in that area. And I know that uh, men have spent like lots and lots and lots of money trying to dive that area, trying to find the wreckage. And they found wreckages, but they just were not the planes that they were looking for. So uh, this is uh, a what you would call a cenotaph. So there is no body here. Uh, but it just says uh, Joseph Tipton Bossy 
Ensign, U.S. Navy Air Force, December 25th, 1924 to December 5th, 1945, lost at sea. And he's, his name is uh, on the stone of his parents. His mother lived to be a hundred. God bless her. Yeah, so, you know, in, in hindsight, you know, when that guy, Lieutenant Taylor said, man, I don't feel good. Maybe he was disoriented. Maybe he had a hangover. Who knows? We don't see. That's one of the mysteries about this uh, event that happened is that we don't know. It, like no wreckage has ever been found. Uh, no evidence of a plane crash. It's just very weird. But uh, I, I think that people were probably wrong about where they might have been. Um, who knows? I mean, they could have been even 100 miles north of where they actually, they believe they thought they crashed. Who knows? I have no idea. Just a uh, very interesting yet sad story that I remember watching on Unsolved Mysteries. I will link the episode uh, so you can watch it. All right, cool. Rest in peace to all the young men who lost their lives aboard that, you know, faithful... Uh, flight you know all right guys i'm out of your fascinating graveyard i will see you on the next episode well at least i hope to see you there all right guys have a good one peace out